Welcome everyone. Hello. So, okay. So just to fill you in on exactly what was going on there. So I was so used to doing YouTube live and YouTube's interface, although it wound up going awful on me, um, is a little bit more forgiving. When you start a Facebook live feed, that's it. And there's no modifying it. And I listened in to make sure my mic cord has been funky. And so if my mic doesn't connect to OBS when OBS starts, then I can't hear anything. Like it'll still broadcast fine, but when I'm playing with accompaniment, then there's no way of hearing the accompaniment, which is a shame. So when things would go wrong in YouTube, I could just close out of the stream and start it back up again, it would be fine. But, but Facebook is a little bit less forgiving in that way. So I'm really glad I figured that out. So. Anyway, I'm so glad you're here. Um, it is Friday, May the 15th, 2020, and I am broadcasting live from Access Contemporary Music as I do every single day at 8 p.m. Central Time. And uh, just a quick shout out to ACM, which is where I'm broadcasting from, as I mentioned. ACM is my place of employment. This is where I've been teaching for nearly seven years. I'm director of operations here. And I'm really excited because not only do we have a student recital, virtual student recital going up on the 23rd of this month, we have a student produced film festival that was supposed to, to be on uh, March 28th, but of course that didn't happen. And now we actually have a date for it. We're doing it on June the 13th. It will be a live stream, obviously, because we really don't know what's going on as far as, um, you know, as far as occupancy. We just don't know. I mean, there's just so many I don't knows about this whole thing, but I'm really happy that we have that on the books. That makes me really happy. So, and uh, <laughs> shout out to Katie's family. What are you having for dinner tonight? <laughs> So I want to, hold on. Okay, good. Sorry, now I'm all like nervous. I'm still, I'm still getting this whole live streaming thing. Like there are so many things that, well, I won't say there are so many things that can go wrong, but there are so many variables. So I have to, to consider those. But just to talk a little bit about what I'm playing tonight. Tonight actually was, I requested a piece back when I was on YouTube, like a week ago or, or so. Uh, one of my friends, my wonderful friend Sue, uh, suggested that I play Debussy's Syrinx. And I thought about it. And so Syrinx is written for unaccompanied flute. And I have a number of unaccompanied pieces that I play. But thinking about it, you know, because I wouldn't have even thought of Syrinx, which is so weird, but I never would have even thought of programming this piece. Because the unaccompanied pieces that I tend to play tend to be more oh, I don't know, more aggressive, more athletic things. That tends to be the sort of music that I gravitate toward. And Syrinx is not that way at all. So I'm really glad that she made the suggestion. And I'm also going to be playing a piece called On Bateau. But just a word about Syrinx. Syrinx is actually the first piece for unaccompanied flute that had been written in 150 years, truly. It was written in 1913. And the previous piece that was written for unaccompanied flute was meant 1750. Uh, CPE Bach sonata for uh, sonata in A minor. So I think we sort of take for granted the fact that the flute is this solo instrument, but really on the musical timeline, this is a relatively recent development. This is a relatively recent thing where the flute is a solo instrument. Uh, you know where you can make a career as a soloist. Uh, Jean-Pierre Rampal in the fifties was really the first. And I know a lot of people are really aware of the name James Galway, who sort of took Ron Paul's lead and just ran with it. But this is really the first, I mean, this was written for solo flute before people were really making a career as like flute soloists. Because the flute for a long time really wasn't, I don't know. I mean, I've mentioned in past live streams that the flute was kind of out of tune and it was just sort of like in the background. It didn't really project very well. It was made of wood, so it had a much more mellow sound. And so this idea as of the flute as being this really, having, having the dynamic range necessary to be a soloist is, as I say, relatively recent. And also, I mean, I'll just come clean. To, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't, playing French music is not something that I'm terribly good at. And this is not, you know, hashtag humble brag. This is, 
just to level with you about where there are areas in my expertise that I need to grow, French music for the flute, and, and the French are very, very protective of the flute because they were really the first country to really embrace the, the what we call the bone flute, which was uh, which dates from 1847, and they were the first country that really embraced it. There were other countries that were a bit slower on the uptake with it. So they really have owned this instrument. French music really requires a level of, oh, transparency and subtlety that I don't really have in my playing. I mean, I'm getting better at it, but it makes sense that I would gravitate toward things that are a bit more athletic and a bit more, huh. And so it's good for me to have friends who suggest pieces. Like I, like I said, I never would have even thought of this piece, and it's such an important part of the repertoire. Um, and just a word about that. So Syrinx is, of course, of course, <laughs> you know, don't you know your mythology? Syrinx was a water nymph that was being pursued by Pan, as in the Pan flutes. And she wasn't having it, so she's being chased by Pan, and so she decides to turn herself into a water reed, as you do, and hide in the marshes, and Pan, the big idiot, decides to cut down the reeds to make his flute, and that's the end of Syrinx. And so that's what this piece uh, is describing. Uh, last night I described the difference between programmatic music and absolute music, so this is absolutely programmatic. And then the second piece that I'm playing is called On Bateau, which means on a boat, of course. It's actually written for... It's actually written for piano four hands. I got to play it with one of my students about a year ago. But the version that I'm playing tonight is written for flute and harp. And I think it's just a, a lovely piece. I love playing it. And I'm very excited to share it with you. So we'll start with Syrinx and we'll go on to On Bateau. Without further ado, this is... Oh, I don't need these. I don't need these yet. Well, okay, good. I wanted to check. <laughs> I'm so nervous now. All right. Without further ado, starting with Syrinx and moving on to On Bato. Oh, I did it in the wrong order. Sorry.
Two very tasty French morsels. Yeah, um, Debussy is sort of deceptive. How do I put this? I mentioned um, he was, he's referred to as an impressionist, but that's a label that he just really couldn't stand. And it really, it does sort of paint him in a corner. And it can be difficult to find composers who are, I don't know, they really push the boat out and they really are sort of emblematic of a certain style because every composer fancies themselves to be terribly original and doing things that no one else had done before. And Debussy really does sort of fall under that heading. There are, uh, he was a very influential composer in that way. I've mentioned Faure and Ravel who are contemporaries of him and uh, certainly they were all influenced by each other. But Debussy can be kind of hard to get to sometimes. Like you, as I mentioned, um, playing French music and specifically playing the music of Debussy is an area where I can really stand to grow as a performer because it requires a level of nuance and precision that don't come naturally to me. They just don't. And so it's it's neat to, you know, I've been playing the flute for however long, but there's always ways that you can grow as a performer and grow as a musician. And I know that <laughs> pretty much all of my previous flute teachers were just hopeful for the day that I would learn that not everything needs to be loud and fast and all of that. So I'm really grateful that Sue suggested that I add syrinx to the program. And I wanted to put on Batho on because it's just a favorite of mine. I just really enjoy, I really enjoy performing it. So speaking of French music, Tomorrow, uh, as, I, as I do, on Saturdays, I like to perform a longer masterwork. And so the piece that I have tomorrow is a very famous one. It's Sonata for Flute and Piano by Francis Poulenc. Not Poulenc. <laughs> it is Poulenc, which is weird. I need to, like, when this is over, I need to, like, figure out exactly why it's Poulenc. But it really is. I mean, it, it's Poulenc. 
Uh, and this is a, how do I put this? So I mentioned Jean-Pierre Rampal, who really was the flutist in the 50s, who really made the modern flute a solo instrument. And so Plank, he wasn't going to write one. He wasn't going to write like a big, like Ron Paul had been asking him. He's like, oh, you got to write me this piece. And Plank was like, whatever, whatever, whatever. But then I think it's Elizabeth Sprague Coolidge. They offered up like a ton of money for him to write this piece. And so he called Ron Paul and he's like, you know that piece that you wanted me to write? Well, now I get to and the Americans are going to pay for it. That is pretty much a direct quote. Maybe a little bit less sassy, but whatevs. Um, so I really enjoy performing it. Uh, it's, I actually haven't, how long has it been? Legit. I think it's been, I think it's been 20 years. I think it's been 20 years since I played this thing. I'm pretty sure. Coming up on it. Yeah. It's been a while. It's been a minute. So anyway, I hope you will join me tomorrow night. Uh, <laughs> mic issues or otherwise, but I hope you will join me. Uh, you will join me here tomorrow night at eight central. It's just a joy to play for you. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for blowing up the chat. Like it just makes my life. It's just the coolest thing. I wish that I wish it was more real time. Oh wait, there's new, there's new comments. Yay! Look at all these cool people. Yay! Love it. Hey, thanks, Jason. And Joel's here. And Jim's here. And Tracy's here. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry. It it kind of locked and I didn't see all of this. So anyway, come back tomorrow, eight central. I will be performing the Puneng Sonata on my masterwork Saturday. And please stay happy, please stay healthy, and I cannot wait to see you here tomorrow.